Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to Meet the X47B, America's 1.5 billion stealth drone. I've never really looked into drones and I know they are sort of like the future of, I guess, like just a battle in the future because, I mean, it means less people will be killed and stuff. Or at least less pilots. I mean, maybe it'll lead to more deaths. I don't know, but... <clears throat> I don't know much about drones, but I have felt like I've seen this before mentioned, but again, I'm not too sure. But we're going to check this out and see what exactly this, like, what exactly is going on with this. But, um, yeah, it looks definitely smaller than a normal plane, but it's still massive. Because drones are typically smaller, but you're still seeing it. It's huge, but compared to, like, the plane version of this, it's probably one third of the size, maybe half the size, maybe about half the size, actually, but... Yeah, let's jump into this and see a bit about this. Meet the X-47B, America's $1.5 billion stealth drone. Oh no, it is big. That's massive. A lot bigger than I thought. It's the wide. US Navy almost developed a stealthy armed carrier launched attack drone to bring new range dimensions to maritime power projection. This drone would have conducted high-risk forward offensive missions against enemy air defenses, enemy surface ships, and even adversarial fighter aircraft. Moreover, this first-of-its-kind drone had the potential to serve as a carrier launch refueler. The nice. drone was based on the Northrop Grumman-developed X-47B demonstrator aircraft, which had already achieved a significant milestone of landing autonomously on an aircraft carrier as part of the Navy's Unmanned Carrier Launched Airborne Surveillance and Strike, or U-Class program. That was a good landing as well, Jesus. Despite the achievement, extensive debate and programmatic deliberation led to the cancellation of the U-Class program. Instead, the Navy opted to develop a less stealthy and unarmed refueler drone called the MQ-25 Stingray. Doesn't look as cool. Obviously, a drone's a drone, they're always fascinating, but the other one definitely looks a lot more interesting, but that doesn't actually matter, does it? It's a drone. On March 18th, 2021, some prominent members of Congress called on the Navy to resume the development of a U-Class-like capability. The Navy needs to develop an unmanned, long-range carrier-based penetrating strike capability. Yet this nascent U-Class program was usurped to field a far less capable MQ-25 tanking drone. Representative Bob Whitman, House Armed Services Subcommittee on Sea Power and Projection Forces ranking member, said in prepared marks in Congress. Retired in April 2015, the U.S. Navy's two X-47B, known by their call signs as Salty Dog 501 and Salty Dog 502, represent the most significant progress in unmanned combat aerial systems to date. With its distinctive sleek, stealthy, tailless profile, the aircraft has become a poster child for the future of military drone technology. But how did the program come about, and why was the Salty Dog retired? Northrop Grumman took an ambitious approach, what starting the with the fuck? construction of a small proof of concept demonstrator. It's like a diamond. What the hell? Called X-47A Pegasus, which it funded entirely on its own. The X-47A fulfilled Northrop Grumman's objectives with its first and only flight in April 2003. The company then designed a much larger aircraft for the naval version requirement, the X-47B. Six years since the X-47B began development, Northrop Grumman finally received a contract to build two X-47Bs, and that time, military drones had become much more prominent as a result of the success of the MQ-1 Predator and MQ-9 Reapers in Afghanistan and Iraq. Though development costs were quite significant, reaching nearly $1.5 billion by 2015, the program meshed well with evolving Navy requirements. One such requirement was that the drone be capable of long-range strike missions, reflected the Navy's new China-centric strategic orientation, including increasing anxiety over advances in Chinese anti-shipping technologies that would require the U.S. Navy to have the ability to launch attacks from a greater range. The X-47B has an overall design similar to that of the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit. It features a blended wing body with no vertical stabilizer. 
and above its pointed nose sits the air intake for a single Pratt & Whitney F100-220U turbofan engine, which is the same engine used in the F-16 Fighting Falcon. The engine is a two-shaft, afterburning turbofan that produces up to 17,000 pounds of thrust. The engine's designed to provide the drones with a high level of performance and maneuverability. The X-47B has a wingspan of 62 feet and a length of 38 feet with an empty weight of approximately 14,000 pounds and maximum takeoff weight of 44,000 pounds. It can provide a cruising speed of 600... Oh, that looks cool from here, though. That is a sick view. ...85 miles per hour and has an operational range in excess of 2,100 nautical miles. Its operational altitude is up to 40,000 feet. The X-47B's flight test began in 2011 and lasted slightly over four years. During this period, it demonstrated the ability to perform a full range of shipboard and non-combat aerial operations, such as deck handling, launch and recovery, integration with manned aircraft operations, and in-air refueling from a manned tanker. These were all significant achievements for autonomous UAVs. Then, when the X-47B autonomously landed on the aircraft carrier USS George H.W. Bush, many hailed it as a historic moment in the development of military drone technology, as carrier landings are among the most challenging tasks for pilots. And that looked like it was a simple landing, though. On November 10th, 2013, the testing of the X-47B continued aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. During this phase, the digitized carrier-controlled environment of the UAV was tested including the communication and interaction between the drone and carrier personnel during launch, recovery, and flight operations. Besides that, on August 17, 2014, the X-47B made history by taking off and landing on Theodore Roosevelt alongside an F-18 Hornet, marking the first time a UAV operated in conjunction with manned aircraft aboard an aircraft carrier. The Hornet was launched from the carrier, followed by the X-47B. After a brief flight, the X-47B touched down and immediately took off again to verify system behavior. What After 24 the? minutes, the X-47B landed on the flight deck and taxied away to make room for the Hornet to land. The demonstration met all test objectives and marked the X-47B's fifth test period at sea. The drone had completed eight catapult launches from a carrier, 30 touch and goes, and seven arrested landings aboard the George H.W. Bush and Theodore Roosevelt. That is Additionally, awesome. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Nighttime taxi and deck handling operations were performed for the first time. The X-47B met its objective of performing launches and recoveries at 90-second intervals with manned Hornets. In April 2015, the X-47B achieved another milestone by successfully conducting the world's first autonomous aerial refueling with an Omega Air KC-707 tanker over the coast of Maryland. This marked the completion of all primary demonstration tasks required of the drone. That was, it was within limits, 20027, and that was at... Uh, Time 55, so it's, it's staying pretty strong. It may go over. Although the X 47 successfully proved that a carrier air wing could operate a large drone, the ability to operate in a contested high threat and dynamic environment, which is the Navy's ultimate goal for a carrier based combat drone, is much more challenging. Since the X 47B program did not include any weapons or intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance ISR tests, it failed to validate the unmanned combat air vehicle's survivability in a range of contested threat environments, nor did it establish which missions would be best suited for such technologies. At this point, the program's conclusions suggest that while impressive, the existing core technologies present in the X-47B may have some way to go before they can support autonomous combat operations. In February 2016, the Navy decided to repurpose the X-47B from a surveillance and strike aircraft into a reconnaissance and aerial refueling drone with limited strike capability. The change followed a top-level review and restructuring of the now-defunct U-Class project. In its stead came a much less ambitious competition to supply a carrier-based drone tanker. This was known as... This looks a lot different. What the hell? ...the Carrier-Based Aerial Refueling System, CBARS program which Boeing won and Northrop Grumman suddenly elected not to compete in. Even though at least one of the X-47Bs was equipped with a refueling pod in preparation for the tender. The adventures of the X-47B ended here.
They've been stored at the company's sprawling Plant 42 facility in Palmdale, California, where they remain to this day. It's deeply regrettable that the X-47B never entered service, and as a result, the Navy took a step back. However, a new drone, the MQ-25 Stingray, is scheduled to join the fleet in 2026 as an aerial refueling drone. While this is a significant advancement that will extend the reach of manned aircraft, it may not be the type of drone that fighting enthusiasts had in mind. Thank you. I mean, even if that never gets used, it's a sign of what is going to be made in the future. But it is crazy. This is all a drone. Crazy. Crazy, man. God. We're getting too ahead of us. we're getting too ahead of ourselves, too advanced. But this technology technological marvel is the epitome of cutting edge military hardware. But um, yeah, this was an interesting look into something that I'd never heard about, and I've never looked into drones before. But it, God, it is fascinating. But you yeah, hopefully enjoyed this reaction, and yeah, until next time, like subscribe.